Okay. Let's see how this goes. Hello, and uh, welcome to the 52 Minutes live stream, uh, number 11. I'm uh, Alex. Hello, Lee and uh, Mark from Montana. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see. Just see. Oops. See that everything is up and running okay. Um, last stream, which uh, was a bit of a shambles. Um, but uh, for some reason, everything seems to be working fine, which is excellent. Um, Lee says, uh, early, been reading um, um, Uncle Adam's new uh, game, Space Station Zero. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've been checking that out as well. I figured we could uh, talk a little bit about it. Uh, laser. I believe he's uh, streaming right now. Uh, probably about, uh, um, you know, the game. Um, I usually uh, watch uh, Adam's streams, but unfortunately he's sort of uh, jumped uh, every other Sunday to the same Sunday as I've been uh, streaming. That You know, it's uh, kind of why I pushed uh, this stream a, bit, a little bit forward. So as not to super uh, clash with uh, with uh, with Adam. Mark from Montana says, "Good morning uh, from Oregon." Well, good morning. Uh, it's good to know you're in Oregon and Oregon and not Montana. Uh, another great day for modeling and painting after the live stream. Of course, you're yeah, of course you are allowed to stream. I mean, uh, to paint uh, during the live stream as well. Um, Ah, okay, yeah. No paints out on the coffee table. Hello, Tom uh, from Berlin. Lovely, uh, lovely city. I've been many times actually to Berlin just as a tourist. Um, it's one of my favorite places to tourist. Daniel Löf from Walkersberg. Yeah, hello. I hope you're well, Daniel. And we've got uh, Duke from Scotland. Um, I was gonna, I'm going to do something slightly uh, Scottish themed. Just uh, just a small thing in a, in a few videos. Uh, it'll be fun. I'm doing uh, well, uh, Lee. Thank you. Uh, it's actually it's been a bit of a week, honestly. Um, it's uh, all of a sudden everything just kind of happened at once. So I've, I'm. Uh, I have had moments where I've just sort of realized I just need to sit down and try and remember how to breathe, um, <laughs> kind of a thing. Uh, so, um, but hopefully, you know, it's just all of a sudden people have had vacations and then they panic because they haven't done anything for six weeks, um, at least here in Sweden. So it's, um, it's always off to a bit of a rocket kind of a start. But I hope that just uh, calms down a little bit and everything will be back to normal. Hello, Martin. Uh, thank you for the uh, for the lovely donations. Uh, Martin Cobb is also um, administrator, uh, lovely administrator. I should be giving him the two pounds. He shouldn't be giving me the two pounds, but I still appreciate it. Um, hi, Martin. Thank you. Victor Glicker says, so flats are great, but uh, hit the size. Uh, it's going to last me an eternity. Yeah, I know. You, you can see the paints. We're going to talk a little bit. About, I, I mean, um, we'll talk a bit about the salt flat paints in a bit. Uh, but I have, I have uh, several uh, thoughts upon the size and uh, solutions to that as well. Hello, Alison. Good morning. I hope you're well. Uh, good morning, Charles from San Diego. Brandon says, uh, hello from Canada. Curious about those uh, slow, so flat paints. They'll most likely be my next uh, to trial. Um, yeah, I've, um, I should have swapped this paint water out before I started the stream. I guess I'll have to use my drinking water. Anyway, um, I've been trying to not buy these paints, these uh, so flat paints from Golden. Golden is a, a, a um, they make, um, I guess you could say it's artist paints, um, and we use miniature paints. Uh, I don't really know if there's 
in theory, much of a difference. Uh, it just that miniature paint brands are just marketed towards miniatures. Um, and these are just what you buy if you're in an art store. Uh, I have some of their other paints, but uh, this is a relatively new line uh, of paints that are matte. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll wait uh, We'll wait a bit with the soul flats. I want to say hi to people first. Hello, uh, Princess Damien. Uh, good afternoon. Good to have you. Uh, Josh asks me, uh, your camera work composition exposure is beautiful. Are you a cameraman by trade? Yes, uh, that's spot on. Um, and the greetings from the pocket dimension. <laughs> Martin Cobb, ad administrator, says, remember to like this uh, stream if you um, if you do like it, that is. Uh, this will help push the stream out to more people, which is very true. Um, YouTube is all about... Um, if if you're if you're liked then you exist if you're not liked then you know like flying under radar but not in a positive way so yeah please just uh, reach down and press the like button and then uh, this stream will show up uh, so that other people know that what we're doing and can join in and say hi and go you know tell us all kinds of interesting things in the chat and whatnot Princess Damien says, I'm tempted to uh, buy these soft flats, but maybe not the poisonous ones, as I'm a brush licker. Hmm. I mean, um, that should be explained as well. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll probably get to that as well. But uh, there's, there is there is some pigments in, in these uh, soft flat paints that uh, should, you know, not be ingested or breathed in in case one shoots it through an airbrush. Uh, things like uh, cadmium and... I think there might be lead in one of them. Not sure. Um, no, same goes for a lot of artist paints, oil paints, and stuff like that. Uh, different style of pigments that contain are made out of something that is actually kind of poisonous, which they tend to avoid in in sort of uh, miniature paint paints uh, because I guess they're aimed more towards the fact that a 11 year old should be able to buy it as well and not not have to read up on on what pigments are inside to know if uh, they can eat it or not um, don't eat your paints my lauren says hello everyone i'm uh, painting uh, gold on my gozithar harvester a big bone monster sounds good i um, i mean it does sound uh, like a, a monster, at least, because it's our harvester. Uh, sounds cool. Daniel Love says, uh, slight tangent, have you read The Three-Body Problem, Chinese uh, hard sci-fi? No, I have not, um, actually. Um, I should probably write that down. I always try and uh, get a bit of a... Oh, I've written lots of things down. That's interesting. I wonder what that's all about. Three body problem. The three, the three. I could do a three. That's better. Uh, body problem. Book. Thank you. Hello, Lok Moi One. I'm I'm doing well. How are you? Um, it's uh, it's Sunday. It's been a very long week, honestly. And I'm a bit, um, I wish it was not Monday tomorrow, because next week it's going to be absolutely hectic. Um, hello, Victor Riviera and Stretch. Um, and lots of people um, seconding the uh, three-body problem, which is, which is cool. Uh, so I should, I should definitely check it out. Uh, Cyborg Sloth, hello, how are you? Uh, long time since I joined the live stream, I agree. Uh, it's good to see you. I was actually this this week. Um, it's very moist. It's it's like it's been warm, very warm, and today it's raining. Uh, my bunker is is going slightly. You know, it's it's like all of a sudden we're in a Vietnamese bunker. But um, this week I was I, I've uh, started out on my first uh, collaborative video because I I haven't. Uh, really done. I, at one point, I did a collaboration a long time ago. I painted a little car that was really cool, uh, together with some other folks. Um, 
it's in there among all my videos, but it was sort of that typical kind of a YouTube uh, creators uh, collaboration where essentially you just, uh, everyone works on the same kind of a thing. And by the end of it, you just, you know, show yours and they sh show yours. And But it hasn't really uh, been excessively collaborative. It's just that everyone works on the same thing. And that's kind of a lot of times what collaboration videos on YouTube are like because uh, people can't actually go meet up um, because people live in different places of the world or there's been a pandemic or, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm not really too fond of that. I think the great thing of working collaboratively is working on the same thing together, like in the room together, uh, like bouncing ideas back and forth and collaborating. Um, so, uh, but I, I now started or initiated the, the work on my first collaborative video uh, together with, with a, a, a lady called, uh, uh, you can see what her name is on Instagram. Can I find that? Because it's just so long. Um, Florencia Grotesque. I'll, I'll type that in, uh, in the um, comments later so you can check her out. Um, but we've started working on, on uh, a project together and I was visited her and uh, her husband uh, filming just for a day, just starting off just to sort of plan and get work done and do some filming um but she, you know she lives in the other end of sweden so it's still like going on a train for four or five hours and then a bus for an hour and and stuff and then back uh so we're not going to go like back and forth uh, tons it'll be that time and then she's going to come up to uh um, stockholm um, and we'll try and finish our project off together but that was a lot of fun uh, just to go and be creative and work to you know uh, work with someone in the same room on the same thing. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to to keep doing that. Rusty Beetle, good morning um, from Louisville. I hope you're well. Uh, Corey uh, asked me, so I uh, hope hope you have a. I'm having a wonderful day. I've had a quite a wonderful. I, I was actually taking it a bit easy today. Um, as I just said, I was away for two days, which only led to like one kind of evening almost uh, filming a little bit and crafting and and that planning for the for the uh, video um the collaborative video and um then i had like real work uh, not painting miniatures stuff also lots of real work next week so uh, sort of preparing for that and trying to also complete a video for next week, which uh, is still, if if I'm lucky, I'll be able to get it out as usual, or it'll be delayed a few days. Um, so it's been uh, it's been it's been a bit of a long week, uh, but I'm really glad to be here with you now, streaming, and also that everything just works. Um, good morning, Marcus Stratus. I hope you're well. Cyborg Sloth says, uh, hum humidity is off the chart, too moist uh, to sweat. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I can sort of kind of feel it uh, running down my forehead here. Martin Cobb says, I'm going to be editing photos during this stream. I was volunteered by my lovely wife to photograph a friend's child naming uh, ceremony. Uh, cool. Did you did it do well? Did you or did you like rush forth? I know Martin just bought like a big flash softbox thing. Oh, someone put a light there. Uh, did you like run forth with that? Just shove it into the baby's face, snap it, or were you like did the discreet photographer? Um, photography is fun. I do it for a living sometimes, um, and I enjoy it. Donny Left says, you're welcome. And uh, if you ever want to try Liquitex acrylic gouache, contact me. And then his face is upside down. Um, yeah. Um, I've, I've watched a few videos, I think, of people painting with gouache paints. Um, yeah. I'll make sure I do.
Rusty Beetle says, my team at work is spread over several states and a couple of countries. Our team meetings are online. Uh, while there is something to be said for in-person meetings, we are no longer limited to that. Mm. Well, the thing is, with this is we're going to be working on the same physical piece, you know, um, which is also what, what what I like instead of I do this and you do that. It's it's actually uh, doing things together. She's skilled in more in sculpting and stuff like that, so she's going to be obviously doing more of that bit, and I'll be doing a bit more of the painting. But we can still like sh shape things together, um, which is rather cool. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking forward to to um, doing a video together with someone else. I, not trying to figure out weird ways of filming myself, I can just actually film someone else in weird ways, which is fun. Good morning. Uh, oh, wait, someone gave me money. Uh, Colvin, thank you. Uh, Colvin says, thank you for all you do for this community. Love your videos and your streams. Uh, thank you, Colvin. I deeply appreciate uh, the donation. Um, just like a bottle of soul flat paint, that. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Ghost Winters says, uh, good afternoon from uh, northeast of England. Hope you're well. I am well. Thank you. Um, Charles says, I, I need to get a dehumidifier for my room. It's getting pretty bad in here. I'm just not sure where I'm going to put it. Uh, I have to get rid of to make room for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I uh, actually quite appreciate the humid humidity while painting because it's like nothing dries out on the palette, um, and because I kind of wet blend a lot, it sort of I get a few extra seconds of of being able to to wet blend. Um, but then, on the other hand, when it comes to waiting for paint to dry, it's a bit worse. Um, I should have a de dehumidifying box. Uh, but no, seriously, especially when working with uh, oil paints, um, excuse me, I kind of, I have to, because I'm, I'm down in a bunker and uh, I have to go up 52 levels and uh, to where normal people live or have their office. And uh, I usually put my miniatures up there in the window because uh, up, up there is pretty warm and uh, that. And so uh, I, I probably reduce my oil paint dry time by half. Uh, it's a lot of steps to climb, but it's kind of worth it. Uh, Yannick says, hello, everyone. Hope you're doing fine. Speaking about paint, how do you thin down scale color paints? And uh, what, what works best in your experience? Um, I honestly, the only thing I use to thin down paints with is water. Um, if it's not like contrast paints, then I use contrast medium um, or like contrast style paints. I used contrast style mediums. Um, sometimes I try to make my own sort of contrast style medium by using Liquitex medium and some flow aid and whatever. Um, but that's when trying to get a contrast style experience from a paint. But just painting regularly, uh, the only thing I use to... to um, dilute my paints with is water. Um, occasionally, when wet blending, I can add a little bit of retarder medium, um, but honestly, that was quite, I haven't done that in quite some time. Um, I mean, that can help. Re retarder medium es essentially slows down the drying time of your paint, so you have a longer time being able to blend the paint on the miniature. It then also takes longer for it to dry. But uh, yeah, 98% of the time, I just um, uh, use water. Uh, Jason Aon says, huge fan of your work. Hope you're well. I am. Thank you. Martin says, I did feel a little bit badass carrying around two camera bodies with different lenses. It, it is, it's a pretty cool feeling. Uh, I, I can appreciate it. Uh, Josh says, well, I have Uncle Adam on one device and 52 miniatures on the other. Now that's some smart thinking. That's like, you, you're, and you're actually doubling up, um, like 
boosting up people's uh, YouTube income, like spreading the wealth around twice. Uh, yeah, I know Adam is streaming right now. Hopefully, he'll be done in about 40 minutes. And so in 40 minutes, I can start talking about his game. <laughs> or maybe I should talk about his game now because the folk, those of you that are here um, maybe want to hear about his game, um, whereas everyone who's already watching his stream is... Uh, I'm just... Uh, Rusty Beetle asks me, how is the little library box you you made it doing? Have you visited it recently? Have you visited it recently? And are uh, the Painter Mini is holding up? I honestly I don't know. I I would uh, I would be surprised if it's still there. I have I know I was I, I was past it several months back, and sometimes I've been getting occasional photographs. Sometimes I think even someone on Instagram. Um, like someone who doesn't know me uh, tagged, walked past and tagged it. And I, I don't think there's anything left inside. I don't think there's any miniatures or tables or, or anything like that. Uh, the, the, the paints are still, you know, the, it looks fine, uh, the paint. Um, I did varnish the living Jesus out of that. Um, he's dead, by the way not yet returned um but um yeah it was kind of kind of only in theory these the hero ones because they put loads of these little for those of you who haven't seen the video it was a friend of mine and they were involved in a project about putting small libraries like they're the size of a small small cupboard uh, fitted onto like electrical boxes we have in Sweden all over the place, uh, like for street lights and stuff. Uh, so you just put a small little box on top of that that was actually had doors on, and there was books inside. They filled them with books, and they did that uh, all over Sweden um, as sort of a celebration of the fact that we have public libraries and stuff like that. And um, they also had some hero versions, which were a lot more advanced. It wasn't just a small cupboard. It sort of looked like a nearby attraction or something like that. And I helped them work on one that was the um, a miniature version of uh, the Stockholm Library, which is the biggest sort of library in, in Stockholm. And uh, so I did a level that was like a miniature library with miniatures and books and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, I don't think they imagining that those hero models would survive for longer than a month and were probably surprised surprised that they survived longer than that um, whereas the other ones I've, I've seen the regular boxes i've seen quite a few of them around and they're actually still used like people take out a book and put in another book and they're actually being used which is nice it's not just an empty box Hello, Miguel. Welcome. Um, Barbara Rex channel uses a food dehydrator to more quickly dry and cure his paints. Um, but he also uses more solvent-based paints. Yeah, like um, uh, enamel paints and stuff like that. Hmm. A food dehydrator. Now that would be a thing. Charles Latoura says, the humanity is also concerned for my books uh, uh, and hex and counter games. What, you, that your books are going to like mold and stuff? Or, or am I missing something? Uh, my Lauren says, that was me. The library is a bit broken, but still nice. Yeah, well, there you go. It was very nice of you to get in touch and, 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 and tell me. Hello, Blue Fangs. And hello, Bill Making Stuff. Um, Good to see you, Bill. I hope you're well. Um, Bill is one of my friends. Um, and um, if you haven't checked out um, Bill Making Stuff's YouTube channel, you should uh, definitely uh, put it on your to-do list right after you've watched this stream. Don't leave straight away. Just stay, press the like button, um, wait for a bit longer, about one and a half more hours, and then you can go check out Bill's channel. When he tries, he can be a really nice guy. I always try and be, be a bit, uh, you know, yeah. 
Anyway, feels great. Daniel Left says, I passed it today. One of the doors are broken. See? Yeah. Um, oh, and Martin just uh, put a link to the to the miniature library build. Cool. Um, yeah, as I said, I don't I don't think they they expected them to last as long as they have. Hello, Jeremy. Black Magic Craft, Jeremy. Good to good to see you. I was just um, talking a little bit about um, um, my collaboration with uh, uh, Veronica, that um, is related to, to Jeremy from Black Magic Craft, which is uh, very cool. Uh, Martin has a, one of his uh, great great. Um, the admin, uh, administrator Martin says a, a, a great way to support Alex is to join his Patreon. Uh, this also gives you access to his Patreon only Discord server where there is a great community of painters. Um, and I'd like to add just in general, lovely people. And there's a link to my Patreon. It's good stuff, Martin. Bill Making Stuff says, better hurry to my channel. It'll be shutting down soon. <laughs> Why are you shutting down your channel? Yeah, Ed says Bill has the amazing cat. This is this is agreed. Um, Bill has the best uh, YouTube uh, creators cat um, in the business. Only after mine, of course. But I don't actually have the cat anymore, so uh, there's there's not much going there. Um, so should we? Um, let's do the. Should we do the? You let me know. Should we talk about the, the the new game or the new paints? What are you um, What are you excited about? You like uh, game paint? Yay! Or the other way around? Tell me. <laughs> Marcus says paint's good. Uh, Martin Cobbs has has a question. I've got a question. Where does the name Fifty Two Miniatures come from? Uh, and and uh, this is a question that I kind of get it every stream, and so I've I've um, promised myself to, to just say that it's kind of shrouded in mystery by now. Um, Bill is is kind of uh, he's, he's got a point there. He's fifty two years old and three feet tall. Um, and uh, I actually have a I, wait wait a minute because I, I've got a I have a lovely uh, patron called. Uh, uh, Wazi Kaboom, and uh, he he wrote me some things. Sometimes they've been on a piece of paper here, just in case someone asks. Um, but but I haven't really got I haven't gotten a question in a while, um, because a Swedish man got rushed to the hospital because he swallowed fifty two miniature horses. He is stable now. Um, this is his kind of uh, human. There's another one as well. Did you hear about the Swedish man with a cold who went to a 52 miniature petting zoo? He was feeling a little horse. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's about it. Um, we're we're going to talk about paints now. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm reading everything about why 52 miniatures is 52 miniatures. Subscribe account matching this channel's name. Yeah, that was um, that was last week. I wouldn't mind if it, you know, I, I don't I don't really feel any necessity in having to uh, stop at 52. So let's talk about these paints. The thing is, I saw these paints um, or got to knew about them. I think the first time I saw them was um, in a video by Vince Venturella. And then some time later, I saw a video, probably by John, I think, in uh, Nin John. And then just recently, like last week or something like that, I saw another video of uh, um, Dana Howell made a video about these paints. These are so flat paints uh, from a company called Golden. The thing is, I haven't it started out with I wanted to get them and then they were just not available in Sweden um, because it's they're relatively new not the brand. The brand Golden is an artist brand that's been around for ages, but this this is a an acrylic paint uh, with a very matte um, surface, so called. That's why they call them so flat. But I could just not get a hold of them, which is kind of good because I was like, I've got I've got a fair bit of paint. You can't really see it. There's there's, there's lots of paints. Um, I, why should I get more paint? Kinda. Um, I should maybe use the paint I've got before I get new paint. 
And so the fact that I couldn't really get a hand of them without ordering them from the US, um, which would imply like import taxes and all kinds of stuff, which is kind of, uh, it was, that was good. And then I saw Dana's video recently and I was like, I should get those paints. And I just sort of checked online because I've been visiting my, my like the big art store and they, they don't have them. But then all of a sudden there was this uh, company, another company in Sweden that had them. So I ordered tons of them. These are very high quality artist paints. Um, and what I mean by high quality is, is, you know, obviously in today's world, whatever you make, you can kind of choose what quality you're going to be making things like the quality of the pigment, the quantity of the pigment, what other stuff you put in there. Um, and I still haven't painted with any of these paints. I'm, I figured I'd do that now. Um, but from what I've seen from other videos, I could probably link them once this uh, live chat is over and done with. I can probably link them um, in the description. But is I mean, the fact is that they're very uh, potent and vibrant. There is also the fact that uh, most of them, kind of, well, not most of them, some of them um, are what we call sil single pigment paints. Um, like if we have a, can I find a paint? Excuse me for a minute. So here's a random paint that I picked off my paint rack. This is Light Blue by Warfront, which is a scale, scale color um, sort of brand. It's the same people that make scale 75 and stuff like that. The first thing is on like a regular, uh, I mean, this is even, even regular. This is kind of considered a little bit fancy, scale 75. Um, they don't write what they put inside the paint, what pigment and stuff like that. And it's always a mix, usually, of several different pigments. And what happens when you mix pigments uh, is, is sometimes that things don't end up as vibrant, um, is one of the things. And a lot of these paints, because they're artist paints, is, is um, just the one pigment in it. And it, it says on here what pigment it is, which means that you get kind of striking colors sometimes. Some of them are mixes, like this blue here, it says uh, mixture. Uh, this doesn't say mixture, so it's a single pigment. This means that the range is still relatively limited. So the point is you get some paints and you mix on your own. Um, but there's still, I mean, there's like three different yellows and there's like three different reds. And so, you know, um, how many more reds do you need kind of a thing. I guess what you don't get is stuff like a uh, Caucasian skin tone. Yeah, you don't have to mix your own. Uh, and you won't get maybe a uh, goblin green. You'll have to buy the the green that isn't called goblin. Um, maybe this one. They also, if we look at the, I think I can, can I be fancy? I think so. Uh, if we have a look at the, the label. This is a typical uh, golden label. Um, they all look like this, not just the so flat. Um, so it says the name of the paint and it says the name of the of the pigment. Um, it also says if it's a mixture or if it's not a mixture. If it's not a mixture, it's got the pigment there. And we've also got how you know how much it covers. See that this has got just half the um, half the little uh, cube. This has got the full cube. And that's why up here, you can see, this is where they actually painted on the paint. It's a bit transparent, whereas this is not transparent at all. And then it's actually how well it can take UV lights and stuff like that. Um, so you get quite a lot of information on paint like this, which is kind of cool. But my, I mean, I just heard so many great recommendations. I think actually the first time I heard anything about these was from a patron. Um, and also the fact that they're very, very matte. One of the things, there's two things, I guess. One is, or is there three, th three things? There are, a f you know, there are a few of these that have um, pigment in them that is considered to be like uh, poisonous, I guess. Um, cadmium yellow is one of them. Uh, probably cadmium orange. Cadmium is is a, is used in is like 
the base of a pigment that is often used for like yellow and thus also orange. And I think, think, I think there's a few others. Um, and so obviously you shouldn't eat cadmium. Um, but it kind of goes for a lot of paint that you shouldn't eat paint. Um, so, you know, just don't eat paint. It goes for all paint. I tend to lick my brush, but not, with the, not when there's paint on there. So it's not really an issue. The other thing is, like, if you have a rare brush with them, it's uh, sort of a must to have a respirator. But I always have a respirator when I airbrush anyway. So it's, you know, it's not anything I've really been concerned about. The other thing is the uh, the size, and thus the price. Um, the thing with artist paints, the same goes for oil paints. Usually, is that you pay for the price of the pigment. Some pigments are uh, more expensive than other pigments, and so the paint becomes more expensive. When we buy when we buy hobby paints, they've just evened that out. So you pay more for the cheap ass sorry uh, pigments, and you pay maybe less for the more expensive ones. Um, but in artist paints, you you notice that the price varies, uh, and that's just down to um, the price of the pigment. And so some of these are, can be more expensive, and some can be cheaper. I saw in Dana Hound's video because she did the research, and I can just repeat her uh, uh, great research: is if you go by pr price per ounce, then the regular ones are like regular miniature paints and the more expensive ones are like contrast paints and you know there's i know people complain about the price of contrast paints but everyone still buys them um and so there's not really price is not really an issue it's the amount because you know this is uh, 59 milliliters whereas this one is 17 so obviously this is going to be like three times the price um but i have a solution for that and that's sharing with friends. I've actually already ordered uh, dropper bottles. Sort of the type of dropper bottles that, hold on, you'll have to give me a second again. That uh, pro this type of dropper bottle, I think they were just a tad larger. I think they were 30 mil and these are 22. And so the plan is, I mean, I'm for me, I'm not gonna share with anyone else, but I'm gonna have a set here at the studio and a set at home. And so I'll be dividing, be pouring out, taking the paint out of these tubs, putting in these dropper bottle thingies and uh, having a set at home and having a set here. If you'd actually get dropper bottles like these, you can get very cheap ones from Amazon. Um, you could actually split one of these tubs into three of these and so if you have a friend or two, you could just split in three and transfer all the paints into dropper bottles and all of a sudden you're down to the same price as a regular, you know, um, hobby miniature paint. Um, but you get to try out these uh, very high quality single pigment if you want to um, artist paints. Isn't that a good idea? I should check the chat. I've been having a very long monologue by now, I think. The Jackter says, at my local art store, the soul flats were accidentally priced in reverse. So cobalt teal was the cheapest and white was the most expensive. Um, I capitalized on that and then told them, yeah, that's good. Buy first, you leave, then you come back the next day and, oh, by the way, yeah. Mark from Montana says, well, I'm still trying to mix up my Chimera colors, so it might be a while before I try out something new. Yeah, you'll be happy to know, because... Um, uh, Mark from Montana, which is Mark, which is a, a lovely patron. Um, he bought Chimera paints recently, um, but he's having it difficult to shake them. And which is, I agree, it's very difficult to shake Chimera paints. You kind of need one of them Vortex mixer things, only they're very expensive. And Mark bought one, only it was broken. Wasn't that right? I can't remember. 
Um, and so he's refrained from using them until he can shake them properly, which is fair. Uh, but these you can actually just, uh, you know, open up and stir with a little toothpick kind of a thing um, instead of shaking. Once I transfer them to bottles, then there will be more shaking. But uh, yeah. Marcus Stratus says, uh, Psst, don't forget to remind people to like the live stream. Yeah. Everybody, there's 75 of you, but there's only 51 likes. The math does not compete. compute. Press the like button. Daniel Lev says, those jokes felt and fell so flat. <laughs> yes, that's why they're so good. Uh, Martin says, I walk away for a minute and the, and the spam started. Uh, but we have blue fangs. It's lovely. Yeah, thank you guys for taking care of, of uh, the, the important business for me. That guy in the sky, welcome. Good afternoon. Um, I hope you're well. And the end is here as well. Good to see you. Daniel Leuf says, uh, you should not use paint with the heavy metals in an airbrush, respirator or not, just don't. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good trick as well. You get the dust. Uh, I mean, unless you're like outside, so to speak, or whatever, which people usually aren't, um, the, the airbrush will leave you a dust uh, that when you sort of touch it, you, you know, it, yeah. Daniel has a point. But there's only like, I think, if I remember correctly, there's only three paints in this entire line that have extra dangerous stuff in them. And uh, there's a yellow and an orange, and I can't remember if there's a, there was one more. And, you know, but there's two other yellows. So, you know, you can just get one of the other yellow ones. It's not, it's not like that's the tipping point of getting these paints or not. Uh, not for me, anyway. Marcus says, splitting with friends, great idea. Great idea. Now I need more painting buddies. Yeah, see, that's that's the thing. But I'm sure uh, this could be organized on the 52 Minutes Discord, for instance. Um, but no, I know that's the thing as well. It's not always uh, like we know tons of people. Um, I think I'm going to put some paint in my palette while I talk. Um, it's not um, like one always knows tons of people who have the same hobby. Um, so, um, that's the thing, but is this, a, is this a good, can you, are you enjoying this noise? But it could be worth trying to find someone to share with, uh, because I bought I can't remember now exactly. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 tubs of paint. And I think that was roughly about $200 worth of paint. Um, the thing is as well, there's some starter kits um, that have like, um, you know, there's a yellow and a red and a blue and a, you know, green. Um, that can be pretty down, uh, yes, could, could be a good start as well. Uh, pretty heavy discount sometimes if you look at it, um, depending on where you are in the world. That's the thing. Like I couldn't really buy these off of Amazon, for instance. Not that I really like Amazon that much. I try and buy from local or at least in Sweden uh, stores. But because it, I, I've never understood how Amazon works really, um, but there's recently there was there's like now there's Amazon Sweden and thus you can't really buy stuff that you want like so I couldn't actually buy golden so flat from Amazon because it doesn't exist here for some reason uh, and they won't tell you that you know well sure but we'll just get it from the states instead that you just can't do it so then I had to buy it from like art stores in the states yeah. Uh, Mercé says, taping bottles to oscillate to oscillating power tools helps with shaking. Very true. Uh, we'll also shake it. I'm going to be painting. Uh, 
Um, but no, I've been thinking about uh, like if, if you've got a washing machine, you can always just store your paints on top of your washing machine, perhaps, and keep them keep them in tune. Nervous Portuguese says hello and good afternoon, peoples and Alex. Uh, today I was waxing my boots and thought, would shoe wax work on this uh, in this hobby of ours? I don't know. I know floor polish has been used as flow improver in quite a lot of strange recipes, of, like how to make your own um, sh shoe wax. I, I've got no idea. Uh, the guy in the sky says, when it comes to shaking paints, I pop, say, 20 into a pillowcase, wrap it in plastic into another pillowcase, tape it, and throw it in the dryer for 15 minutes. See? That's, we, were thinking, we were thinking the same thing there. Um, I've, I've once been very close to, like, uh, visited a friend's house, and they had this bouncy thing that you know you, you have you put your kids on there and they jump up and down and up and down and they do it for about three hours and then eventually they break either an arm or a leg <laughs> uh, and I, I figured you know next time we visit I should just bring my paints and try and strap them somehow to my son's uh, body and I put them in his socks or whatever I don't know and then I'm like sure just jump keep on jumping Golden says to not spray the cadmium paints. Yeah, well, there we go, says Princess Damien. Let's just stick to that. Marcus Stratus says, I recall Dana Howell saying both the starter kits have a toxic pigment paint. That might be so. I don't think there's, I mean, um, I know I should be the, uh, the fact that there's a Payne's Gray is, is lovely. Um, but, I mean, the thing with, with paint toxicity is obviously as a uh, responsible YouTube content creator um i should you know advertise extreme caution in all things you pursue here in life um but like i just you know i got a little bit of paint on me here um and i don't think it'll kill me it's great you know obviously you should not um eat or inhale or whatever you do with paints that have cadmium in it but you could still paint with them and if you want you can if you're really scared you can wear gloves but it's like um in the end walking down the street getting hit by a bus is probably going to be a bigger killer than um using a paint that might have a little bit of cadmium in it. That said, of course, you shouldn't then be airbrushing it or, you know, uh, definitely not listen to this at the moment irresponsible YouTube creator. But the fact is that there's, you know, there's tons of artists out there that have been using these paints for a very long time and they wouldn't keep on using them if there was any real danger um, or producing them if there was any, like, as long as you're informed of the fact that there is cadmium in the paint and you can act accordingly uh, and act safe, then I think you can just paint with them. Brian Nelson says, uh, Dick Blick, did you just want me to say the word Dick on stream, or are we? Uh... <laughs> uh, Dick Blick seems like a good place to buy stuff. They have discounts on all the golden. Yeah, I'm sure one can can look up. People always have drives. Remind me now not to keep on drinking my 
stream water um, because it's now paint water. I guess a, a dick flick is a, an American thing, is it? A US? Uh, Bill Making Stuff says, how many Swedish dollars do you spend on paints a month? We have kroners, uh, as in crowns. Um, as uh, I believe uh, England had crowns once upon a time. Um, if I mean, if I would, if if I would know how much I spent a year and then um, divide that by month, um, good question. Now I bought all of these, so that sort of bumps things up. But this is probably the first time I buy paint so far this year, and so this was uh, apart from the odd bottle, and so and these were about. No, that's not true. I've been buying oil paints, haven't I? Uh, probably more than I would like to admit. Brian Nelson says, I've emailed their help. Uh, email, which would be Golden's help email uh, with these questions. So they've been really good. They said that cadmium in the paint medium should be fine, but that so flats should be varnished because it's toothy. I guess that means it, it can sort of rub off, uh, which is, I mean, that happens when you have a matte paint, which for me uh, obviously is fine because I, I uh, varnish all my miniatures because I play games with them on uh, tables. Um, Tom says, I clamp my paint bottles on my jigsaw fastened on the table. Uh, that guy in the sky, thank you for the uh, kind donation. Um, unfortunately, I'm unable to put my paints on top of the washing machine. The missus is constantly sitting up on it. No idea why. <laughs> this, is a, this is a public, responsible stream. Are you on the gin and tonic again? <laughs> Say, say hello to your wife again for me, please, uh, unless she's busy on the washing machine. Um, okay, um, that put me off. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to be. A, I mean, I can't drink the water now because it's going to be okay. I'm trying to be a responsible creator here. People start talking about washing machines. <sighs> Marcus Strata says he bought so much paint he can't remember it all. This is very true. People also give me some paint. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of true. I have, to, I mean, I, I guess there's a thing. Let's start painting a miniature. Okay. Um, and I can talk while I paint. If I press this button and then that button. Uh, you should be seeing it's not going to be very large because um, I don't I don't really have that kind of setup uh, at the moment. But I am working on having that kind of a setup. Um, this is a uh, this is an alien, kind of a fish alien, I guess. Um, I'm trying to see if it's in focus. It's not really, uh, but uh, yeah, you get the point. It's uh, one of them um, infinity. Infinity miniatures, and so let's put some paint on it. It's the first time I use a golden so flat paints, and I have not really thinned them down with anything. They're just sort of straight out of the pot, uh, and uh, yeah, let's just see what happens when I put paint on there. I'm 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 doing green and uh, a bit of brown. I think. Is it terribly out of focus? If you're wondering why I'm all of a sudden uh, not talking lots of gibberish, it's because uh, I'm painting and I have a hard time painting and talking gibberish. I've actually been working uh, lately on uh, reorganizing things here in the studio so that I can have a better of 
sort of paint and stream setup. Um, I just haven't really gotten to fixing that yet. Um, but uh, eventually I'll be able to actually uh, do this with a, you get a bit more of a close up image and I actually get to see what I'm doing uh, without the lag of YouTube, which means I can compensate for things like, uh, is this in focus or not? But you didn't get the picture in the picture. There we are. Now you should have a picture in the picture. So this is uh, quite a nice paint. I don't know what to say. I'm wet blending and, and it's uh, working out real well. Um, it's kind of the perfect consistency for wet blending. Maybe a little bit too thin, uh, but not too bad. The green is very, very green until I put brown on it and then it turns brown. Um, this usually happens with all paint. But it's very, uh, it's very smooth off the brush. Like it flows real well. And uh, I'm really, I'm quite good at doing sort of um, um, you know, I don't even know the name for it. When you say if something's uh, good or not, the green's green, the brown's brown. Uh, it blends well. It goes real, real, real flat when it dries. And someone's drilling. Terribly sorry about the noise. The thing with like single pigment paints, see I did it. Um, but I wicked it out first and then I did that on the paper and there was no cadmium in it. Um, one of the things with single, pig single pigment paints, which is, I guess, sometimes what one forgets when not used to working with them is, is we're just used to taking a paint and, you know, putting it in the palette and painting with it. And all the paints from the same line just work sort of the same way um, because they're mixed. And they're kind of mixed to also work the same way. The thing with when it's sort of single pigment paints um, is that all the different pigments, as we could see before, have different coverage. And so if we have a look at this again, there's like, if we actually see these, uh, see the black lines behind there. Um, and so this yellow doesn't cover as well as the red and, and the red covers better than the yellow and the teal covers better than the red and so forth. So if you just put these in the palette and paint with them and you're just using the red straight out of the pot and it'll be not covering as well as the teal. And so that can sort of be something one needs to think about when using the single pigment paints, because if I say use all the pro acryl paints, uh, this doesn't go for all of them, but they try um, whatever brand is that, you know, they sort of act the same when you paint with them. So, so maybe if one wants to use this red, but have like full coverage, uh, one needs to add a bit of like something else in there for it to cover as well. And so one needs to sort of learn how to mix and blend paints a bit more than um, when using this kind of stuff. But it also, I mean, even um, like I paint quite a fair bit with scale of 75 paints and a lot of them are quite dependent on pigment. Usually some of the greens and the blues can be quite transparent. Um, and uh, that's just, just, just the way it is.
Blinded by daylight says, it's always best to be careful with paints. Made the mistake of straightening my brush with my lips when using white spirit recently. That was a mad dash to the bathroom and a lot of spitting and rinsing. Yeah, but it, it happened to me as well. It does keep you from doing it again, though. Uh, it tastes, it just sticks in your mouth for a very long time. Um, the drilling noises aren't audible through the mic. Well, uh, that's, that's good to hear uh, because it was in here. Um, okay, more uh, more green. I was a bit lazy choosing green, uh, but I wasn't going to overthink things just uh, just right now. Um, being on stream like this, um, because it's like, oh, it's a frog fisherman kind of a thing. Let's let's do it green. Maybe a bit lazy. Um, I'm using the, this is the permanent green and also uh, red oxide. Some of my favorite paints, oxide, there's a red oxide and a yellow oxide. Uh, I just think they're great to blend in with pretty much anything. They're also great when one is trying to make uh, like a Caucasian skin tone. And just mixing those two together with some blue or something like that usually works pretty well. But this is a nice paint. It's really, really smooth off the brush. Uh, it covers exceptionally. Like, uh, fair enough, this is a, a Zenithard primed miniature, so there's a fair bit of, of white, but it's like completely covering stuff, uh, almost to the point where the Zenithard prime becomes totally unnecessary not really I'm, I'm using it as a guide to see where i should paint a little bit brighter and a little bit darker but it's it's covering really really well which is kind of cool Mercé says i worked in a lab and had a, a swig of buffer instead of my tea once uh, now I know what PBS and Buffer taste like. I don't actually know what Buffer is. Uh, you're more than welcome to enlighten me. I'm not really sure if his face should be green. Actually, I'll leave that. I think he needs to have a purple face. I'm not sure, how, okay, how out of focus is this stuff? Is this Is this better? No, that's worse. Is it just the resolution? Maybe. Mr. Pendrag says, I really love that red oxide. Yeah, both red oxide and, and yellow oxide um, are, are great. Especially, I th I've really enjoy them when using these also sigment, sing, single pigment style paints um, to sort of blend in. Okay. This green is very green. There we are. I'm now going to grab some of this. There's a super, super green. Hope you don't find this boring. I just, uh, I was just excited to try these. I got them just a few days back and I haven't had a chance to try them. Um, and because my coming week is gonna be awfully client and work related. I just wanted to have a shot at these before. And then it just happened to be a stream today. So I was also supposed to be talking today about, um, um, I'll swap back, here we are. Um, I know I've got this super green down here. I'm not going to try and, you know, well, I could try and change the focus um, to the palette, but I wouldn't have any idea of what it actually is in focus. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around there. There's a super slimy green. Um, so today, uh, on Friday, Vince uh, Venturella 
and uh, Uncle Adam uh, over at Tabletop Minions released a sci-fi skirmish game called Space Station Zero. And um, I've been checking out some some of the stuff they've released, like the, uh, um, let's see if I can show you. Uh, I should be able to show you if I press this button here. Space, space Station Zero, command your crew through the hazards of a mysterious space station in this sci-fi tabletop miniature war game of survival, explore or die. Um, which was, uh, that was kind of fun. Um, now you should be able to see my miniature again, I hope. I just need to see what you see. There we are. And um, I've been checking out what the, the stuff they've been releasing about, um, about the game. And it seems kind of fun. I, I like the story. It's like uh, every now and again, uh, some you know spaceships disappear when they they they're going to do the faster than light speed, you know, and something goes wrong with the engine, and uh, they just disappear, and uh, they end up in this not like another dimension, but a part of space where there's like absolutely nothing for miles and miles and miles. Um, uh, you know, even the closest stars are so far away. They could never, they could never like travel anywhere. Um, the only thing that's there just right next to you is this uh, space station. And then when they land, you realize that, oh, there's tons of like other crews from other species and all kinds of stuff hanging out in a bar kind of a thing on this uh, space station zero and um, everyone's you know kind of having a good time but no one's really ever going to get away so i guess at some point you figure out is is there what are the mysteries of the space station can we get out of this place or what's what's going on and um that is of course where the adventure starts and so you can put together a crew of pretty much anything you Fancy, you know, um, because you could have been any kind of alien species um, that have arrived at this uh, space station. And then um, you travel across this huge, I mean, it's a huge space station and uh, all kinds of uh, dangers and, and uh, excitement and adventure awaits. And it seems to be really focused on um, co-op, cooperative play. And also, um, you've seen what I'm doing. I'll, 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 now you can see me a bit better. I keep painting this. Um, I can post this on my Instagram later on as well, so you can see what these, uh, what I've been doing during this stream, what the paints looks like. All I can say right now is that this green is like green. Anyway. Um, the game seems very focused on cooperative, like play. There's also solo play. And if one wants, there's missions uh, that are adversarial. But I really enjoyed hearing the focus on on uh, both solo and cooperative. Um, is that gun or is that shoulder? I have no idea. And I checked out uh, Vince Venturella. Put up, uh, I put up a link to these things as well. I've said to put up links in a lot of description things, and I kind of forget what I've said by now. But hopefully, I'll remember. Um, I checked out Vince Venturella's. He played a like the first mission, solo mission, and so there's like AI, you could call it, uh, not really, but kind of AI controlled um, enemies. And you have a little mission, and you have a crew that is like. Apparently, you can choose if you want a specialist crew or like thugs. <laughs> you get get a few th specialists or a lot of thugs, but it was like something in the region of from five to ten miniatures, um, and then you need a few miniatures for the for the 
the foes and then uh, you play games and you can like play cooperatively with your friends which is um, i was kind of excited maybe i could do that with my son uh, i haven't really found tons of cooperative uh, games um, so that kind of excited me and i just wanted to share that i know they've been doing a very good job of that themselves this um um these last couple of days so uh, you know it's kind of all over the our small part of the universe uh, on on um, youtube right now but um probably still worth to go have a look i think um it's it seems like a fun game um bill making stuff says i got me a copy already copy already yeah um i i like the also, the, like the, the the way the, the way dice is used, um, I think it's d12s mainly, and so yeah, you should check it out. I'm bad at explaining these kind of things, but just how the system, like the in-game system, seems to work, um, I enjoyed that. The way the dice is used, I've never seen that before. Admittedly, I don't play tons of different games, so maybe it's a common way of using games. Um, it's like rolling dice, and the, if it's if it's an even number it's 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 a win and if it's an odd number it's a fail it's not like you need to get a five or you need to get a six or you need to get a seven it's like uh odds and evens um which is fun yeah go check it out this is like so green Massey says, buffers are solutions that uh, resist pH change, usually used to dilute biological agents in the lab I worked in. Okay, cool. Uh, Mr. Pendrag said, used the soul flats about uh, five-ish months, started trying them because I was chasing a better brown. And the burnt umber, burnt umber is absolutely ace. Yeah, I got that. I'm, it kinda, it's a bit boring when I was, I was looking at, you know, what paints were I, I was going to order, and I was like, <laughs> red oxide yellow oxide burnt umber and black and and like um Payne's gray there was the first ones i ticked in and i was like oh, i should probably get some of the colors too that like the pinks and the reds and the yellows and the you know but i do like me a good brown um let's have a look we got a burnt umber didn't i get a, a regular raw umber as well um because Marcus Stratus is, is asking, oh, I've been looking for a good brown, and that burnt umber sounds good. Is it a warm brown or a cool brown? Well, to my experience, this is the raw umber. It's usually great uh, looking paint as well. I don't know if you can see that, if I can focus on my palette. Should be down there somewhere. Uh, that's the raw umber. It looks like uh, your average, just uh, if you're ever going to paint dirt on a base, kind of a color. Um, and then we've got the burnt umber, which is coming right up. I'm just going to put the lid on the other one so as not to spill. try and get the cap open now burnt umber is a is a favorite of mine when it comes to oil paints and also ink uh, it usually feels a bit more like red maybe a bit more warm uh, there we are don't know if you can see the difference but this is this is more red and more warm. That's the, the, the burnt umber. And the raw, raw umber more looks like mud kind of a thing. I can um, I could take a picture of that as well, uh, Marcus Stratus. And uh, post on the uh, Discord, Patreon's Discord. If you others want to see it, you just have to join the patron, won't you? It's paywalled burnt umber right there. 
uh, Lee Sweeney says, building a pirate crew, uh, six crew uh, for, for Space Station Zero. I was actually going to do like a, uh, just that instead of showing my screen, I was going to like, I'll, I'll, I'll print out the picture and I can show it. I can be like Space Station Zero only all the paint. Like there was no, I don't know what's missing. Is it probably the blue one? Yeah, uh, it's kind of missing. And so this is not what the cover looks like. This is the uh, my printers out of uh, a cartridge type cover. But uh, yeah, one can choose a like what uh, I guess orientation, what kind of ship you came in on if you were a pirate or uh, whatever you whatever you are, and um, that'll give you different abilities, I guess, uh, in game. Um, I don't know, the, 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 the idea of just seeing that bar, it kind of sold me, like everyone hanging out. I guess it's a bit like that uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, never played Dungeons & Dragons, but, you know, you have the tavern or yeah, everyone meets up, and, like it's time for a new adventure. So it was a fun mental image. And I just think it's a great thing when people of the uh, community uh, like you know um, I st when I started watching YouTube when I got back into the hobby it was like Adam was the first channel I watched and whenever I actually really need to learn anything uh, proper <laughs> about painting uh, I go watch Vince because uh, he's like the uh, knowledge guru for me when it comes to specific paint knowledge and then um, it's just great to, that they start making games and releasing games and I think that should be um, utterly supported um Lemura says, uh, uh, live chat is just like a tavern minus the drinks. Yeah, kind of. I, I, it's a good thing I'm not doing the drinking, I think. Uh, okay. I'm still on the, on the green skin here. which is now um, utterly, oh, that was a lot of yellow. But I mean, this is, it's, it's very uh, strikingly saturated and um, covering, I've got to say, and very, very, very flat. Um, I've realized I very much, because I was painting at home with some paints that uh, I honestly am not very f fond of, um, which is, I guess I'm allowed to say that, but they just didn't really work out for me, uh, which is a Green Stuff World paints. They just did not suit my paint style at all. I had a very hard time. I still painted with them. I still use them. I painted the general for my army with them. Uh, hopefully that is going to be the next video. Um, but... Uh, Yeah, I had a hard time with them paints. Um, one of the reasons, because they were quite glossy, um, probably satin, but almost, almost, almost on the verge of being glossy. And uh, it was different. I'm so used to you painting with matte paints, and using satin paints was actually a lot more different than it was such a long time ago. I painted with satin paints, and like. Paint doesn't stick in that like if you have a if you've got a satin or a glossy paint, it's like the next layer of paint. Um, you know, it doesn't stick as well on top of the sort of glossy paint surface. And uh, I had a hard time with that. I can see how you can do 
for some people probably you know uh, enjoy just that fact it's probably easy to get sort of smoother results but for me it just felt like the paint wasn't sticking it was like i was just rubbing it around and um i was not really enjoying myself honestly um but i am enjoying myself now this is some of the best paint i've used in a very long time This is a very green alien. It's pretty cool. I don't know how well you can see this, um, really, in this little stream here. It's like the, I, I should have a, another lens, but that means I need to buy another camera, which is um, going to have to stop getting some pretty huge donations for that to happen. Jason uh, AM says, I love the consistency between all the colors, uh, making it very easy to know what you're getting into when you open the pot. Yeah. I mean, one of, something I enjoy a lot with uh, sigma, single pigment colors like these is to like just put a lot of it in the palette even stuff that now and i didn't do that now i just put some green and i painted some green but essentially take a bit of a blue and a purple and a red and whatever and just have dots of it in the palette and constantly just try to mix in uh, and mix different paints um, there's a lot of fun uh, something i never do when i have you know instead of trying to look for the like oh that's the perfect Caucasian skin tone and instead trying to mix a Caucasian skin tone and, and failing, realizing like, oh, but now I know how to mix like this cool purple alien skin tone. And then I go grab this bottle anyway and use that. But um, I think there's something to be said about experimenting with single pigment paints. Also, something to be said is that you can definitely just paint with them regularly as well if you want. You don't have to mix. Uh, like, just look at this ultramarine blue for your ultramarines. It's the most ultramarine ultramarine um, I've seen in a very long time. It's like ultra marine. Uh, Marcus Stratus says, I've heard a lot of people praise uh, AK's paints. That's AK Interactive. They, they, the few I got weren't too impressed with. An olive green I have is absolute garbage at coverage. I've not tried them. I still have uh, issues with AK Interactive <laughs> uh, because of a very old thing. They did this terrible ad campaign. Um, and I just have issues with that. The only thing I buy from AK Interactive pretty much um, is their ultra matte varnish because I haven't so far, I haven't found another ultra matte varnish that is as ultra matte. And I've also buy some of their abtilung oil paints just because I kind of bought them first because they said abtilung and not AK Interactive. And since I've learned that they're AK Interactive, um, but I've also heard go heard good things about their especially like they released an an update like. Um, AK Interactive 2.0 paints kind of a thing, um, like a year back or more, um, but still a new sort of formula a little bit, I think. And I, I hear a lot of people do like them, yes. Uh, Pete T says, gold and soul flat are six pounds a pot at Class Art in the UK. It sounds very expensive. I guess you can blame Brexit or something. Um, I can't remember exactly what I paid for my paints, but I can check. Let's see. I just need to log into my uh, money thingy and see if I can find an invoice. 
Okay, so I paid. It doesn't say. It's just an invoice for all of it. That was a shame. Is there a um, something from the order? No. That was also strange. But I think I paid about two pounds a pot. No, uh, twenty. Uh, two. What? Wait, I'm confused. Six pounds a pot. That's cheap, isn't it? I thought you said sixty, and I was like, "Whoa, that was expensive." Um, but six is is cheap. Sorry, I'm I'm confused here. Way too much Sunday. Um, Chris Dre says, hello from the Northern Rockies, late as usual, apologies. What miniature are you painting? Uh, it's, it's a good idea. It's an Infinity miniature. Um, it's part of my uh, Stargrave crew, I guess. Could also be part of my uh, uh, Space Station Zero crew. It, it's like a fish frog alien. Uh, it's a metal mini, white metal underneath. The Zenithon Prime, and um, it's, uh, I agree, it's rather cool. It's like a frog fish, but with hen feet and uh, a very alien looking head. Mr. Pendrag says, the third generation, that's what I meant with my 2.0, uh, third generation AKs has treated me well. Yeah, I've heard people like them. Marcus Stratus asks, what's the name of the greens I'm using right now? There's a permanent uh, permanent green and a, a yellow green. I've also added some of the yellow and some white to spice up the uh, the, the green highlights. And uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty rad paint. Dragonfire says, uh, I find Green Stuff World Max matte varnish just as good as AK. I've seen that. I haven't had. Uh, I haven't had time to try it. There's also Scale 75, I think, was going to release or have released an ultra matte varnish. And also, I think Pro Acro is supposed to release an ultra matte varnish, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use up what I've got. And then once that's been used up, I'll see whoever's released what and what I can get a hold of. Um, I need some paint. What should I use? Yellow oxide, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I've I've seen that green stuff. World has has released um, the the ultramat. I just have not had time to to try it. Donny Left says, I'm going to London in November. I might buy some soul flat paints, but I might just buy more acrylic gouache. Yeah, the ones I, I ordered these from a place in Sweden. Um, I didn't find them excessively expensive, but if they're six pounds, that would have been a bit cheaper than what I paid, I think. Maybe not. I'm honestly not sure what I paid. The lot was... I, I, I can tell you what all of them cost, and then we can divide, and then we can get one of them, um, one of them, um, the total was about 2,000 Swedish krona, because I also bought some brushes. It was 2,300, but I bought some brushes and some pots and stuff. So let's say about 2,000 Swedish kronas. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, divided by 17. 
my I'm great at maths. That leaves me with 117 krona. Uh, so that would be roughly about, uh, you know, 11 dollars or 10 pounds kind of a thing. Brian Nelson says, I just purchased, purchased some Vallejo Mecca matte varnish, but I haven't used it yet. Yeah, in, for me, in my experience, anything that says matte is too glossy <laughs> and it needs to say ultra matte or super matte or something like that. Regular matte varnishes are not sort of ch chalky enough for me. Um, but um, I, I haven't I haven't tried, so I'm not going to say, I haven't tried the Mecca varnish, so I'm not going to say. I know uh, Vallejo is also going to release, I think, a ultra matte polyurethane varnish, if I'm not mistaken. I always, I mean, varnish is, I think varnish is great. For one thing, it's the... Uh, the little uh, added protection that uh, our miniatures need on the table. I always usually varnish with a polyurethane varnish first. Um, like anything really, but if one uses a a, um, a glossy varnish, it'll just uh, hold up better than than um, a matte varnish. So for protection, one can gloss varnish first, preferably polyurethane varnish, because it will uh, just uh, be sturdier than than a non-polyurethane varnish. And then um, on top of that, after that's dry, I then use the super matte varnish, sort of for looks more than protection. Which is, uh, I mean, they're all going to be manhandled on the table. Um, sometimes even by my child, which, uh, you know, that can get, that can get messy fast. This was strange. I don't know really what I'm doing with these colors here, but, uh, it's nice. Um, Dick Blick website says uh, $7 US for the cheapest sole flats and 8 for the next step up. Yeah. And some of them are like even more, I think. But if one evens it out, it's not too bad. Uh, Chris Dre says, looks great. There's a pile of green orcs in my cave that would benefit from that green, I think. Yeah. This was very orky. I don't think I planned the orky quite. Um, but I think I'm going to maybe soon maybe ruin the orky a little bit by adding some uh, violet or purple or something to this. Um, I just, because now I said I'd, oh dear, that was a sloppy mistake. Now I said I was going to show this on, take a picture and post it on Instagram once the stream is over. So now I need to actually um, make sure I paint something um, that is, uh, you know, looks nice in that. But they thin down very nice as well. Like I started out wet blending and I didn't, I didn't thin anything down at all. Um, but they were probably glaze very nicely as well because it feels like when they're thin, they're great. I don't know if you can quite see behind me. Oh, well, you probably can't. Um, that's where I'm installing so that I can sort of do some streaming with painting just a little bit better. Um, I'm actually got stuff stuck up into the ceiling so I can attach lights and cameras and all this stuff. And um, I kind of didn't really pay attention to what I was ordering. I've ordered some of this stuff before for other things and places, but I didn't, yeah, the, di the diameter of the steel that I've got sticking up into my roof up here is like, like the railing of a ship, 
I could probably sit on the thing that I've built over there. Um, but hopefully in like, it'll still take time, like a month or something but or more. But then maybe I can do this uh, stream painting a little bit better, i.e. you actually see what I'm doing. But uh, So also why I'm practicing. It's nice to be able to just sit and paint and stream for a little bit, some company. And um, I'm not quite used to it. So. Princess Damien says, the six pound price is an online exclusive deal. I am buying some now. Go for it. I, it's a good price. Uh, Brian Nelson says, the, the sets are a good way to get them for cheaper. Uh, and the pop sets, that's what they call the sets, the pop set has several standard colors. Yeah. And keep an eye out for anything that says cadmium and um, read up on the warnings. MF uh, Dice Dealer says, Amway we by MIG varnish supposedly the same as uh, AK? Uh, something is about a former business partner, as I recall. Yes, um, that's right. That's from what I know, that's exactly the same thing as well. Um, ammo MIG that used to sort of work for AK Interactive, they were the same and then they're not. And uh, But I don't, I can't really get a hold of it here. That's the thing as well, I buy in my store and so I buy whatever they've got. And um, But uh, I've heard that as well, that am ammo by MIG's varnish is kind of the same as, as the AK Interactive one. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that I really like this paint. I haven't even put my glasses on and I'm still enjoying myself. It's pretty, pretty rad. It covers exceptionally well. Dragonfire says, yes, Pro Acryl is working on one. When it will come out, no news yet. Yeah, I don't know what it, what it is. Um, I'm, I don't know if super matte varnishes are difficult to, uh, to make because it feels like it sort of happens that people say they're going to release a super matte varnish and then it just never shows up. Um, but yeah. Regarding the cost, the pots are larger than most mini paint companies at uh, two ounces per pot. Uh, agreed, uh, Stephen. It was also, uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier that um, um, a great way of sort of, if, if one has friends that paint, that also would be interested in uh, trying the paints. It's a, it's a great way to get over the sort of cost of entry um is to buy you know you could split one of these pots into three if you also order like cheap dropper bottles from amazon you could then transfer the paint into dropper bottles put one of those little shaky ball things in and and you could get pretty much three smaller pots of paint out of one of these and so if there's three of you uh, and bob's your uncle then you're fine to uh, to do that and it won't make such a huge dent in your in your wallet okay i'll switch back so you can see what i'm doing even if it's a bit uh, a bit blurry mr fishy here is getting some pink uh, pink scale things And I think maybe that's going to be the color for the face as well. I don't know. I kind of has to watch out just a little bit for the opacity here. It's not, it's almost a little bit uh, unforgivingly great uh, coverage. And all of a sudden, this all turned into one big watermelon. That was not what I planned. It's like the watermelon alien. What's the watermelon alien's name? Anyone got any? Um, What do we think? Whoop. 
Oops. That's one of the best ways of getting rid of a mistake, by the way, is rapidly just try and rinse your brush off in water, wipe it off on a piece of paper, and then just try and wipe that paint off. Watermelon man, fish, alien person. This pink was lovely though. It's like uh, also another great orc paint, I guess, for the for the lips and that. They're usually your standard sort of very orky orc has uh, has a pink gums, if I'm not mistaken. That guy in the sky asks, Alex, do you have a uh, future uh, diorama planned? Enjoy those videos. Uh, thank you for the shout out earlier to the missus. <laughs> She's the best. Yeah, that's good. I do have uh, kind of got some uh, diorama plans. Uh, you could say that the um, I'm working, started to work on a collaborative video, um, which I guess in a way it's going to be sort of a diorama. Um, I have, I have a plan for at least, I think I know at least two, do you know the space, small space marine dioramas? Um, I think I know at least what the next two are going to be. And so, um, th that's kind of small dioramas. Uh, but first, like, we'll see how, how how I go this. In theory, there's supposed to be a new vi video out on Thursday. Um, but it also depends a little bit on what work will be like for me this coming week, which is there's going to be a lot of it. And there has been a lot of it. And so I haven't really... I'm not where I'm at when it comes to the video. The video is also has a small sponsor. And they haven't really been um, super fast on the ball, honestly, with getting me the stuff I need. That's not what's delaying the video, but it's sort of made me inten intentionally not sort of sit up all night to try and finish the video so that it definitely will be out on Thursday. But I've painted everything. It's a kit bash video, sort of, um, which is fun. And it's one of the things, there's a few different kit, 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 kit bash things. Um, and one of them is um, the general for my Stormcast army. Um, is is uh, has been created and is painted as well. And I've pretty much finished the entire script as well. So uh, you know it's. Uh, but then all of a sudden, there's there's still always more to making videos than one realizes when thinking, oh, it's almost done. And then it's like, no, it's four days, another four days work to do. Um, and so, yeah, this really covered the white as well is very, like you put white into something and all of a sudden it covers excessively. I think one can when doing sort of layering work like I'm doing now, sort of watering down is it's probably a good idea. But yeah, I very much enjoyed doing dioramas, especially lately, the small ones. It wasn't really the plan with the Space Marine dioramas that I was supposed to enjoy them so much. It was a bit of a joke, not really a joke, but the whole sort of, I mean, the series is called Making Money Painting Space Marines, just because apparently when one makes videos about Space Marines, that's when people really watch them and thus it generates an income. Um, but I like painting the Space Marines. I mean, I wouldn't paint stuff I don't want to paint. It's not the point of me having a channel. Um, and I really like painting them little Space Marines, but and also the sort of restricted, doing a small restricted diorama was great fun as well. So I'm really enjoying them. 
Uh, but I also need to move on with my Stormcast army in that. So, uh, but yeah, so I mean, a, a certain type of diorama is planned. Nothing huge, nothing big. Um, yeah. Felix says, uh, best greetings from Germany. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Felix. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know the Kyrillic letters, so I can't pronounce your name. Um, says, hello from Russia. You're a wonderful artist and your works will inspire. Thank you. I'm glad to hear. That's kind of the, the point of, of my videos. That I hope they will, will inspire just a little bit. Uh, just keep people doing the hobby. Um, because it's a great hobby. This is exceptionally vibrant. Like one would, if, if one doesn't want vibrant, one, you know, would have to just tone things down, like uh, add brown and I don't know what. to add brown to your green so it doesn't scream at you. And now for some uh, violet, I believe. Violet or blue? I don't know. I'll take both. Ed's, Alan says, I've been using... Uh, um, MIG, Ammo by MIG's Ultra Matte Varnish used to be uh, a lot of satin spray, polyurethane. We may be some Testos matte spray over that. Uh, very sturdy for metal figures. Yeah, that's the thing as well with metal. Like this one, all my metal minis, I usually spray with a glossy polyurethane varnish just to make sure. Maybe even two layers of the stuff and then a matte varnish on top of that uh, just to make sure. Wow, that was a nice, This wow. Look at this violet. Isn't that a pretty violet? This is like an, oh, no. This is what you wanted. This is like um, the emperor's, emperor's backpack. Uh, no, the, the Roman, Roman emperor's uh, wonderfully violet cloak. I'm trying a new brush as well. I just had to order it, see how long it lasts. Um, it's a Windsor & Newton. They're called Scepter Gold 2. Uh, and it's a mix between uh, sable and synthetic. And I've never tried that. I want to see how it goes. It was pretty nice for wet blending. I sometimes have an issue with wet blending. This is starting to sound very technical, which I apologize for. But I sometimes have an issue with wet blending that my synthetic brushes feel a bit too soft. Uh, no, my my um my sable brushes feel a bit too soft, but I also uh, I don't really like synthetic brushes for some reason. Just yeah, and so I'm trying this mix. It was also a lot cheaper than than what the other ones are. Charles says, "Let's see. Oh, everything uh, jumped terribly." Uh, and again, everyone, please uh, remember to press the like button if you're if you're around. It helps spread the sp helps spread the news of the fact that this stream is going on. Um, where did you go? Charles, I've been painting uh, minis since the year began, have jumped into the deep end, had some unpainted figures from last century, D&D, started with craft paint, uh, got some army painter and Vallejo and a few odds and ends. Great to hear. Yeah, I, I mean, paints have become a little bit of an obsession for me, which is kind of maybe a bit silly. Uh, I mean, Vallejo, if, if we're just going to be like, I like to paint minis, and you know, there's nothing wrong with Vallejo paint. Uh, 
this is great paint and and you know Vallejo paint is great as well and I've always said that I think um, different paints suit different people like there's some paints I just don't like to paint with because they don't suit the, my painting style and then there's other paints that seem to enhance my painting style and then there's also the fact that there's different paints that are good for different things like some paints uh, maybe thin down great so they make great glazes or some paints work extra well through the airbrush like are these warfront paints from scale color are really for some reason difficult for me to paint with the brush it's like they're very sort of gooey and sticky and then just don't through they work really 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 well through an airbrush um, and you know so there's um, all these different things but most importantly is that I think it has a lot to do with how you paint and um, there is no specific paint that is better than other paint uh, there is specific paint that is better for you to paint with because if somehow paints you you know it suits your paint style these are obviously sort of a very high quality um, and I painted with some paints that are of a lower quality and I just think you know real real cheap paint can sometimes just not help you know if it doesn't cover if you need to paint on like three four layers of something to get it to cover it's you know that's maybe not um, helping you in your painting journey um, but some people might like that in a paint so you know it's um, um, Vallejo is a great paint and army painter is great paint and this is great paint um, I do encourage I hope uh, to just try different paints though because I don't see the point in sort of sticking with the one brand um, because different brands also do different good things like these pro acryl paints which are also very very nice um, do especially great sort of if one wants a good covering bright like a white or a cream or something like that um, they have awesome paints for that and just saying like no I'm just going to use Vallejo that's it I'm going to buy the entire Vallejo range um, is maybe you know why not just try the one next to it and see you know you were going to buy the red Vallejo try the red that one and just see if you like it or not and just experiment around and eventually you might find paints that really suit you and that um, really help um, in your sort of painting journey um, yeah that was a that was a long one. Martin Cobb, if you want to help Alex buy more paints, you can support him on Patreon. This also gets access to a subscriber-only Discord server. You're very right, Martin, and thank you for le letting people know. Uh, yes, please do. It's actually been a bit... Uh, I know a lot of creators are experiencing the same thing, but as we all know, the, the world is uh, a little bit upside down at the moment, for, and uh, costs are going up, and interest rates are going up, and I've noticed quite a fair bit that people uh, can't afford the patron anymore, which is, I mean, totally understandable. I'm not going to blame anyone uh, for that. So there's there's uh, there's not like a huge growth on the patron side of things. It's more like some people join and some people leave. Uh, and I have the same amount of patrons as I did in sort of in February, but you know, before that, it was all just sort of going up. Um, I mean, I guess one issue with this this is that also my <laughs> cost of living has go, gone up, yet um, I rely on a certain part of the patron money as an, as an income. But yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a thing. So if you've, if you've been sitting there for a while wondering, you know, maybe I should support someone on Patreon, then uh, please give it a try and see what you think. I'm nice. Okay. Bye, Blue Fangs. Good to see you, and thank you for helping out with the with the admin thing. Corey Sheffer says, "Gold and Soul Flat in uh, Calgary, Canada, uh, are anywhere from wait from twenty to thirty a pot. I think I need to search uh, elsewhere." Yeah, do. Uh, Ed says that might be the uh, four ounce uh, price instead of two ounce. It could as well be. There's big pots of this stuff because uh, 
you know, this for us is a lifetime supply of permanent green because our canvas is exceptionally tiny. Uh, whereas if you're painting a huge canvas, which these people do, then imagine what they pay for paint. So we shouldn't be complaining too much about it. Uh, but therefore, there's also twice the tubs that are twice the size uh, for painters that, you know, do art and require uh, lots of paint. Uh, Brian Nelson says, I was thinking about making up a airbrush version of the paint. One of uh, Golden's YouTube videos says two parts paint, one part uh, open, thinner, one part water. Sure. I mean, I, um, I, don't, ha I don't actually own any airbrush specific paints. Um, I just use paints and put thinner and stuff in them and, and airbrush with that. Um, so, um, yeah, just make sure it's not one of them. Did I just paint my microphone? I'm not sure. Just make sure it's not one of them uh, cadmium, or I think there's one with lead in it as well. It's I, it, it says on top, it says on the labels, I think, um, so that you don't get uh, cadmium dust everywhere kind of a thing. I'm sorry, I just, uh, I, this purple or violet uh, was a very nice color. So I'm I'm actually a little bit hypnotized at the moment. I do apologize. I know this is a live stream. I know I should be uh, entertaining you and not only asking for your money. Um, but I blame, I blame Martin for all the, for all that. There is the super comment thing as well. If you're like, no, but I'll buy you a coffee, then you can, uh, then you can do that. There's like uh, a button somewhere on YouTube. I don't really know how it works. And yeah, as soon as this stream is over, I'll take a picture of this thing and uh, put it on Instagram. And you can see what I've been doing because I know, I mean, especially now you can't see what I'm doing because I haven't even pressed that. Uh, that camera button but um, even when I have that camera button this one in then uh, I'm sure it's still difficult to, to see what I'm doing at the moment I'm accidentally smudging purple everywhere that I'll have to go back with a bit of green on that should we do a purple face while we're at it let's do a purple face I was going to do purple and purple and blue and red. I don't know. Let's just let's just put paint on. So far, I haven't really blended tons. Um, been doing a few mixes for highlights, but uh, not for. For the first stage so it's very sort of uh, primary colored colors it's like green purple red um, this is one of the things that can happen when using sing single pigment paints is not enough time spent like desaturating or adding a few different tones here and there but uh, Let's not try and be too hard on ourselves, right? Oops, that's a blue. Where did the blue come from? I don't know. The paint is holding up pretty well on the wet palette as well. I know I have some paints that sort of start to separate pretty quick. Uh, that has not happened. Okay, that's just weird stuff going on. But I guess it's an alien. I'm not saying it's anything weird going on with the paint. There's something weird going on with the color scheme. But yeah, this is an alien after all. I 
I'd love comment comments as well in the commentary if you're watching this video in retrospect. I know it's different. Usually I just sit and talk and um, it'd just be interesting for me to hear what you think about me sort of painting sometimes. I know, you know, what you hear will be different because all of a sudden I'm quiet and uh, not really concentrating on what's going on in the, in the chat or stuff like that. And uh, usually the only thing I do is just not craft very much. So I'd love to hear what uh, what you think about me sitting here painting and being a bit uncomfortably quiet from time to time. I think I might let this uh, uh, stream drag out a little bit. I want to finish off a little bit more on this mini. I'll probably keep on going for another half an hour. I know usually I uh, only stream for two hours, but um, I'll keep on going for just a little bit more. Duke uh, Cole says, looking forward to seeing your work on Instagram later, enjoying the stream, but I have to go out to the shops now. Take care. Good, good luck at the shops. I hope they um, they have all the things you need. Um... Clyde Dashing says, can you use Pro Acryl Transparent to give your paint job a parent tone or should you just mix the colors into your entire uh, palette? Um, I think you should try both and see what you like best, is my diplomatic answer. Um, I, uh, yeah. I enjoy you sometimes using inks and transparent colors um, on an existing paint job to sort of tone things in, tone things down. It's like the brown's not yellow enough. I put some yellow ink on it or like you have something that, you know, you want it to be a bit, maybe it's a, it's a teal and then you add a bit of a, a blue ink or something like that or a transparent paint in the shadows. It makes it look cooler and more natural and stuff like that. But also because I wet blend, a lot of the time that kind of happens gradually because it happens during the wet blend and then I see that and then I do the same thing when I add more sort of layers of paint and I'd say just try and um, and see what what you think works best. I tend to just vary. It's different from like paint job to paint job and the mood I'm in and where if I just feel like I should should try something different for a change. We got name suggestions for the watermelon alien. This is this is uh, how late my, my you know the chat is for me. Uh, Wonder Studio says Pip Pip the watermelon alien. Um, Donnie says Bob. Don D says, Carl or Mr. Bubbles? I don't think it can be Carl because this alien will probably play against my neighbor, Carl. And so uh, that might get confusing. Chris Dre says, any thoughts on Space Station Zero? Ordered the book and the D12s yesterday. Um, yeah, I talked about that a little bit earlier. And um, I think it seems... Uh, very interesting. I want to play it. I like the, I mean, first off, I, I dig the concept, um, just of the, 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 little, the little story that is about how, how the aliens uh, or whatever you are, whatever race you are, ends up on a space station. There's no way of getting out of there. And um, it's, it's a pretty fun foundation for like a story or for your character and stuff like that. Um, I also like the size that you can have, like you can have a, um, a war band or whatever you want to call it of like, uh, five miniatures. You can have more as well. If you've, you know, if you don't have such elite folk, but still, um, I very much like the fact that there seems to be 
the major of focus. I mean, I've just from what I've seen uh, is uh, like cooperative and solo play. Um, we we live in a world world of you know uh, very much uh, just trying to kill each other, <laughs> and so it's nice to just have a game that focuses on on uh, something else. Whoops, they got really, really, really blue feet. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm waiting for my hard copy, and uh, we'll see. As always, I'm always excited for games, and I say I want to play them, and then, you know, it, it takes a couple of years. But in this case, because I'm working on stuff for Stargrave, um, but, you know, I can just... I, 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 I mean, miniature-wise, I, I already have the miniatures. Uh, I could just start playing, and I could even like I could try playing with my son, or I could uh, just try uh, play by myself, play the solo solo rules. Um, so uh, I think I think it's uh, it sounds like a lot of fun, honestly. Uh, Lemur says, Lucky is very fragile and peels after decal solution. Fine for display pieces. I kind of missed a, a conversation here, maybe. But Lucky is a very good name for this alien, I think. Lucky Pip. Okay. Better type this down so I don't forget, it, forget about it. We've got uh, Lucky Pip is the name of this alien. Lee Sweetney says, Sandia is watermelon in uh, New Mexico. Uh, yeah, same in um, in Chile, at least, I know, where that uh, Sandia is, is watermelon. <laughs> Blinded by daylight, Vessi Malone. <laughs> That's also pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lucky Pip, a.k.a. Vessi Malone. <clears throat> MF Dice Dealer says, I've got a selection of the Soul Flat. I should try a limited color palette mini. Um, yeah, please. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, Tom says, I love my golden high flow paints. They're great for airbrushing, but a bit glossy. I agree. I enjoy them as well. I've got uh, quite a few of them uh, back there. And yeah, yeah, I agree. They're very, very glossy to the extent of it's that it's difficult to paint anything on top of it because they, I mean, they're high gloss kind of a thing. And so um, I've used them on things, and then sometimes I even like matte, I like I matte varnish and then <laughs> and then paint on top of that. Um, but yeah. Lemu Crazy says, mix in grays to desaturate. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're quite right. Brian Nelson says, it's so much harder to go from less saturated to more saturated. So it's nice to know how saturated these paints are. These are like, ding! Um, and, then the, and then there's the fluorescent ones. I mean, they're, they're probably crazy. I actually ordered a, a pink. It was a pink or a red fluorescent. But... They, it was uh, out of stock, apparently. I didn't get it anyway. So um, um, I, I will be getting it once. Uh... Oh, that's a strange color. Um, once they have it back in stock, they'll, they'll send it out to me. So I've already paid for it, I guess. Um, just haven't received it. Um... But um, no, this is uh, the saturation is uh, on the verge of being silly. Uh, 
Um, Dan D says, it's a great hobby, but your edition is uh, fresh and unique. I appreciate that. Thank you. I um, I'm having fun. Honestly, sometimes it's it's actually if I'm going to be perfectly like openly honest, it's sometimes it's a little bit difficult because you have um, with YouTube. There are ways to do YouTube, and I don't appreciate them really uh, a lot of the time. Sometimes I try and it doesn't really feel right. And, uh, you know, when I don't try, it's just uh, I realize a lot more people would watch my videos if I did um, try because that sort of YouTube spreads in a certain way. Um, so I have issues with that, I guess. But I really do try to stay true to just having a hobby. And then and then sometimes I I need to not do that because... Otherwise, my videos would just disappear in the big space that is YouTube. But thank you. I went on a bit of a rant there. I'm sorry. Oh, that guy in the sky gave me money. Thank you again. Uh, shout out to uh, the Mrs. Uh, Aisling, uh, pronounced Ashling, uh, here in Ireland. Uh, Mrs. Ashling. She has uh, uh, the patience of a saint when putting up with myself. Also, we have a baby hedgie. I know. Um, that guy in the sky has a, a um, not maybe pet uh, hedgehog, but uh, a hedgehog in the constant vicinity. Um, you're a great <laughs> Irish gin. I, ooh. Um, you're about to retract that money, but I wasn't aware aware of, of uh, any great Irish gins. Yeah, please uh, enlighten me. But uh, yes, hello, Mrs. Ashling. I hope you're doing well. You have a, a lovely husband, but you know, and supports uh, is great. Clyde dashing as well, beverage of choice as long as it isn't too expensive. Uh, thank you, Clyde. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, Lemuru Crazy says, MS Paints is another unique channel. Yeah, um, definitely. Go check out MS Paints um, if you haven't. Um, Even Bigassi says, uh, hi, mate, what are you painting? This is a kind of an infinity um, alien thing that I'm just trying my uh, newly purchased soul flat paints for the first time on this uh, on this little miniature. I've just never liked these, these, these miniatures. Some of these for my Stargrave crew have been zen assembled and Zenithal primed and then like been stuck on the shelf for uh, over a year. I just have not been, yeah, painting them. And so I just grabbed one and thought I'll start working on it on stream just to try these paints. It's very, um, it's like green and blue and purple. It's like the paints I bought. They're not, um, uh, yeah. But uh, exceptional colors nonetheless. This green is pretty, pretty rad. Um, don't know what happened with the rest of the skin. He turned uh, uh, kind of purple in the face. Um, but this kind of happens when one wants to try all the different paints. Um, probably might have looked better if he was all just uh, Lucky Pip, the watermelon alien green. Um, but yeah. I should just highlight here for a little bit. Uh, before I forget, uh, because this should, oh, that was bright. Oh, dear. So the point is, um, even that, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to take a picture of this once the stream is over and um, publish it on Instagram so that 
uh, whoever's been watching this uh, stream can see, oh, wow, that was a very green green, um, because the point here a little bit is trying the soul flat paints. Wow, I messed that up radically. Um, I'll just cover that with purple. Sorry, Pip, you're looking ugly. It was my fault, and I apologize. I think painting the details on the face is not something I'll be doing while streaming. Um, Brown Arama DMD, any tips for mixing uh, white, uh, gray in a wet palette? My white is always too opaque. Um, I don't know. Any tips for mixing white, gray in a wet palette? Also, like when you have you have other paints and you use you you've got a white, and you want to add some white to to the other paint, and everything just becomes too much white because the white is very opaque and just takes over. Is that what you mean? Uh, because I know that happens. That's one of the reasons. Sometimes uh, I guess it's maybe it's a bit lazy. Why I like having different brands of paint. Um, there's a this is not like it. I'm not saying this is what you should do. I just want to talk about it. There's a line of paint. Sorry. Um, there's a line of paint by Scale Color, which is the same brand that makes Scale 75. They have a brand line of paints that are called Fantasy and Game. I'm saying this because we talked about paints earlier. Um, I always use their white usually when I'm mixing in white to paints on the wet palette because it's just like really thin. It's, it's almost like it's an airbrush paint or something like that. Not really. Um, and so it's great to use when blending in, um, especially for highlighting because it also kind of then thins the paint and it doesn't become super opaque. Uh, but I guess in theory, you just need to dilute your white. Um, before you uh, mix it into other paints, I guess. Um, but this is just, a, that's, I mean, it's a pigment thing. Some pigments are very, very opaque. Uh, white, usually titanium white is, is one of them. It's like, it's either white or it's not. And um, yeah. One of my favorite colors for uh, it, it's like actually not using white when I, if I have like a purple, I add something to it that it's not, that's not really maybe a white, white. When moving on to highlights, it might be a very, very bright sort of skin tone. Uh, it might be like um, a very, very bright yellow, like a pale, pale yellow. So it's not actually super white. It's a, one of the other ones, but it's just a pale, like a pale Caucasian flesh skin tone, a pale yellow, a pale blue. I'd rather use that uh, instead of a white. Um, but that doesn't really work when you've just got the single pigment paints, I guess. It's all, it's a journey, friends. Girl Painting, hello, good evening. I hope you're well. I think I saw you on Instagram today. You got um, the weird thing that happens when you sometimes post uh, about the same topic too much, which is weird. It's uh, it's not like you get blocked. It's like you get shadow something. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's happened to some other creators I know as well. Like they're really into a subject or something like that and they're collaborating or whatever and they use the same word too often or the same sub i don't know what it is and then they sort of kind of get blocked which is weird because they're just actually feeding the platform with content which is what the platform wants i but did that happen to you today girl painting i thought i saw that i mean maybe it was someone else um Bill making stuff is uh, just dry brush everything. Obviously, yeah. Bill is a is a he's a heck of a dry brusher. I've um, um, um it's yeah. <clears throat> You're great at it, Bill. Girl painting says I use a, a priority mix of Games Workshop for Lego Scale seventy five and Army Painter. Yeah, 
I, I love having different types of paints around. Um, uh, Jason Ayan says, do you see yourself buying additional soul flat paints? Uh, maybe. I feel, I mean, I feel pretty covered uh, in, a, in a way of, uh, you know, I've got red and yellow and blue and green. And then I've also got some in-betweens. Um, I've got a white and a black and lots of browns. In theory, I could paint anything with this. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, I don't... In theory, I shouldn't. I should just learn how to mix a bit better. Um, that's why I got so many in just the one bunch. I just got, I kind of got the ones I figured this is what I want and need. Um, so, uh, yeah. Jamie Mayers has become one of the painting tariat. What's that? What's a terriot? I don't know, but it's great anyway because it's a join the 52 minutes patron. Huzzah! I agree. Um, Blinded by Daylight says MS Painting in, uh, Paints is a fantastic channel, uh, as is uh, yours, Bill Making Stuff. I agree. Both great. If there's new folks around and I haven't uh, checked out Bill Making Stuff or MS Paints, please uh, go ahead and do. Lemur Crazy says, Army Painter, for example, has some incredible colors and some really bad ones. Uh, that's it, it kind of happens uh, with some paint brands, I think. And it's a, I think it's especially when you just have so many different mixes of paints. Um, it's difficult to have like a bad paint if you're working with like a single pigment, um, I guess. But I can, I can, I can relate that to several brands. I think where sometimes you just, it doesn't. It can be a specific blue or a specific green or something like that, and it's just like what's what's going on. And then there's some of them that are great. Um, usually browns are always nice. We all like brown, don't we? The end says, I filled out the range of golden with some uh, magenta liquitex acrylic gouache since that paint line was lacking that particular color. To, uh, the finish is very, very similar. Yeah, there's no magenta, is there? There's a, uh, no. Quite true. There's no magenta. I, I do very much like the uh, uh, Chimera magenta, though. So I've got that at hand. WLL says, good evening. Uh, Brian Nelson says, the pots with heavy metal have a do not spray pictograph on them. Exactly. So um, so do as they say. John says, uh, keep an eye out for back to school sales. That's a smart idea uh, because that usually happens at, in craft stores and it doesn't happen so much in hobby stores. So, for some reason, there's not so much miniature painting going on in schools. Should don't see why not really, um, but yeah, it's a good idea. Ivan says, "Nice, the limited edition uh, Libertos from Infinity the game. Have you ever tried the game? I haven't. I just bought them for uh, for um, for my Stargrave crew. There's there's quite a. I think half of them in my of my ten Stargrave crew are um, Infinity miniatures." And honestly, some of them were given to me by my game store, uh, like because I bought a heap of miniatures, and they're like, "We have these that were, they're only meant to give away uh, and not sell." So I think some of them maybe maybe this was one of them. I didn't know it was limited uh, edition. It's, uh, Lucky Pip, the alien. But I haven't tried the game. Uh, Lemu Crazy says can recommend Liquitex inks from art stores as well. Definitely, if one is after inks, uh, very much so. MF Dice Dealer says inks are great. I make washes and uh, four contrast paints with them. Yes, um, in inks are great for that as well. Making your own sort of contrast style paints with adding some medium and some flow improver or something and messing around.
Charles has bought a set of the armor painter shades and starter set of the speed paints so far. Yeah, those speed paints were a big thing when they were released, and now people are all quiet about it again. It's, uh, but that's uh, more of a YouTube thing than than uh, anything else. Um, I've been experimenting on the Reaper resin plastic minis, looking for two or three base colors to use in lieu, if not needing primer on these figures. Oh, yeah, because the Reaper ones come primed already, don't they? Good luck with that, Charles. Chris Ray says, oddly hilarious. I enjoy watching you paint and ramble more than I enjoy the thought of painting the 200 or so gray resin uh, minis arranged on my table right now for Age of Fantasy regiments. Um, I, it sounds perfectly uh, natural, to be honest. Maybe uh, not so... Uh, yeah, it's not uh, sort of hilarious. It sounds just like a, a natural defense against uh, uh, potential you know having to paint a bit too much uh, too many minis i need to clean up my green a little bit here from my purple mistake previously hope you don't mind um, i'm not really sure about my purple face honestly maybe if i um, highlight it with Almost the same color as I did on the fins. It's a bit safer. I just want, really wanted to try the purple, but it kind of looks like I'm just trying out some new paints using the green and then using the blue and then using the purple. And, you know, I think maybe because they're so saturated as well. I should try and just do a desaturated mini using these paints, just to try. Not now, obviously, but um, I tend to be more of a desaturated kind of a person. Anyway, that sounded great. But um, using sort of desaturated paints has always been a thing I enjoy. Doing the really fiddly stuff is difficult on stream, especially since I forgot to put my glasses on. That's what's wrong. I was like, why is everything so blurry? Um, it's because I don't have my glasses here. And so I'm kind of messing things up a little bit. Princess Damien says, the box sets for these paints are called Zing and Pop. Exactly. Great names for, for, uh, for these paints because that kind of describes the, the saturation going. It zings and pops. It's like the, what's that, crackle rice puffs? Crackle, pop, and zing. And puff. This is the rice rice puffs of paint. If you're new to this channel and you just join this chat, this is a a rare glimpse of what goes on in my head sometimes. Surprisingly quiet, uh, followed by um, spurts of, of uh, total gibberish. Welcome to 52 Minutes. I hope you enjoy the stay. No, but seriously, I'm, I'm uh, quite looking forward to having some kind of a different setup for... for um, For this, 
so that I can, you can notice that I'm painting without even doing this. I could do this. I just, I just really don't know if you can see it all that well. Um, so it feels a little bit pointless. So that's something I'd like to sort out. That's the long run plan anyway. Um, just pray to the camera gods to see if my camera can multiply itself. Pip's turning out pretty cool, but I think I'm going to put Pip away now, and I'm going to have a little bit of, more of a look on the chat, and then I should get ready for working my behind off the coming week. Um, Bill Making is asking, did I stream last night? I've got no idea, Bill. Did you stream last night? I was busy doing other things. Um, maybe you can check on the internets if, if there's a stream that you did last night. John says, all this sci-fi talk after I just bought a box of meat trees. Is that the new uh, terrain for... Um, What's it called? Age of Sigmar uh, mini scale down skirmish style. Elio says on the theme of wet palettes, how do you keep your paints from getting too thin on one? Using the red grass palette within like 30 minutes, everything is a glaze consistency. I think that depends on the type of paint, honestly. Um, but I'm not sure, but I, I kind of feel that some paints really uh, suck in moisture, as you would say, um, and some paints are the opposite. They just dry on you, regardless of what's going on with the wet palette. I know what you mean, though. Uh, I mean, I guess you could change, try and change the um, the paper. I'm using the, re the washable, reusable membranes from... From red grass games, I'm not really having any issues. Um, but if you are, you could try different styles of baking tray paper. Um, I know different brands usually. The more expensive it is, the more sort of silicon and stuff they put on there, and so the less water goes through. And usually, cheaper brands put less silicon on there. And so you could experiment with buying. Like if you have an issue with paints watering down too much, you could just try and buy the most expensive baking tray paper there is like go into that the luxury cooking store and go like give me your most expensive baking tray paper especially if you say it's almost french sorry for you french guys but it's you know it's cooking and it's a joke um you could try that maybe Girl Painting says, yes, my account is shadow banned, uh, meaning none of my content appears under the hashtags I use. It's such a weird thing. You'd think they sort of, because I know you're not spam, spam, spamming anyone, Girl Painting. You're just, you know, a creator on YouTube. Um, but yeah, I've heard more, more people like that around creators that this has happened to. It seems to be some kind of newish thing they're doing. They're like, you're being too creative. Stop it. You're banned or shadow banned. Marcus Stratus says also, also says, if the palette is uh, too wet, that may affect it. Uh, when I refill my palette, I drain off excess water from one of the corners. Yeah, that's a bit of a balance as well. Sometimes if it's really hot outside, I need to have tons of water in the palette if, if I'm at home painting or like, you know, paints just really dry too fast. So it's almost like the paper is floating on top of the water. But otherwise, I mean, if if you have a moist sponge and then the paper will attract moisture from the sponge that will be you know less 
water than if you you know stuff is floating around so yeah try as well what marcus said not have too much water in your in your wet palette Uh, Lemu Crazy says Vallejo Buff is a go-to for lightening most colors with other modelers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're back to that. It's only that my del chat is so delayed. Um, but yes, also, uh, what's what's that? What's that? The yellow one, pale pale yellow, something like that. Pale sand. That's the one. Insert pale sand meme. Corey says, mini painting would be a cool addition to art class. I agree. Graham Barry says, have you seen Space Station Zero by Uncle Atom and Vince Venturella? It's a solo or co-op game where you have a warband that explores an ancient space station with robots and mutants. Indeed. I've uh, mentioned it uh, twice uh, in this stream now, Graham Barry. And I think it looks awesome, but I'm not going to talk any more about it uh, because I figure people can just rewatch. If someone's watching the stream, like rewatching the stream, it'll be like, okay, so this is the third time you're going to talk about the game. But uh, I agree. Check it out. Asatu uh, asks, do you watch hockey? Greetings from your lovely neighbors in Finland. I don't actually. Um, uh, I'm... Um, Kind of the only sports I watch is my my son's uh, soccer games. Um, and uh, my son likes to play uh, soccer, and uh, also he like to watch soccer. So sometimes I watch soccer like with him, but um, I'm I'm not I'm not much of a sport uh, interested person. Mario from Argentina. Uh, says, I love your channel. I'm glad to hear it. Mario, welcome and thank you. Um, snap, crackle and pop. Yes, that's it. <laughs> uh, okay. There's lots of people still... Um, writing interesting things but i'm i'm uh, i'm going to jump off um, last question i want to answer from steve have you tried using the resculptable blue stuff and uv resin i just had my first go at it but would be interested in tips and tricks not sure if i'm happy with the result as the resin is clear um, i don't know what the clear resin would how that would affect things i've i've used it um, i don't know if you saw my video on, on kit bashing one of the recent ones i did pauldrons or shoulder pads by copying a a game workshop pauldron i put it in blue stuff to get the mold and then put the uv resin in there uh, to cure i think one of the issues with using uv resin is that when resin cures especially also uv resin because it's such a fast curing time it gets warm when it cures and so uh, that ruins the mold basically because blue stuff uh, change you know it becomes soft when when it becomes warm and it hardens when it's cool but then when you put uv resin in it and uh, use that then you kind of ruin the mold which was my issue i had to re redo the you know uh, redo the mold in blue stuff every time and so one thing one could try is use something that isn't uv resin i had a uh, or have a patron that uh, used milliput but actually um what do you call it um diluted because you can dilute you can you can change the texture and dilute milliput like you mix it and then you can um, dilute it with um, isopropanol alcohol. This kind of stuff. It sounds like that. 
Um, so what you do is you mix up your milliput and then you put some of your isoprop uh, in the milliput and just uh, work your way at it. And eventually it'll, you know, depending on how much you dilute it, you can change. Uh, it's a great way of making sort of like a very thin paste for filling um, gaps and stuff like that when you assemb assemble miniatures. Uh, you can almost sort of paint it on. It'll just flow into recesses, recesses and stuff, which is great. But uh, you can then technically also pour it into your mold, kind of. Instead of having to try and squish the paste in there, you can sort of dilute your milliput with isopropanol alcohol and then pour that into the blue stuff mold. And then you'd have to wait for like, I can't remember what the drying times are for milliputs, like an hour or whatever. I don't know how, what, if I, the isopropanol alcohol changes the drying times. No idea. You'd have to experiment. But then in theory, you should be able to reuse your mold uh, a bit more. You just have to be more patient with the drying times. Um, and that was uh, the last question for today, I believe. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. As Martin says, if you want to join the patron, that's great. There's uh, links in the... Um, in, in the chat. We have a great uh, community going on Discord. Um, and um, that's all fun. But thank you for joining me today during this, uh, this chat. Please let me know in the comments of what you thought of my, I know it was a bit more distant today because I've been painting. Um, I'm a bit more alert sometimes on the chat uh, when not painting. I'm going to take a picture of this uh, miniature now and post on Instagram so you can get a better idea of what the paints look like. I haven't done anything fancy. I've just sort of first a wet blend and then lay it on a little bit more green and orange. Started working on the head. Nothing really happened there. Still had to work on that. Uh, but it might be fun to see as a reference to, to these uh, so flat paints. And... Uh, I hope you have a great Sunday. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye. I should press a button. Where's the buttons? I can't see. There's water. Bye.